All right, so the next group of presenters are actually a panel of ASU students and teachers who volunteer in the prison complexes in Arizona. Um, and they're gonna take some questions from the moderator, Kim Chi Pham, who I'll bring up now, um, if she wants to come up, and then they'll take audience questions afterwards about what it's like to go into these prisons and actually volunteer and teach. Um, so without further ado, please welcome Kim Chi. Hi, my name is Kim Chi Pham. I am a peace officer. I also TA for Miss Stephanie Northover at Central Unit in Florence Prison. And at this time, I'd like to welcome all of our panel members onto the panel. Okay, so starting from the closest to me to the furthest, could you all please introduce yourself with providing your name, major, or field of study, and then which class you teach in prison? Hi, my name is Stephanie Northover. I don't know if it's even really needed. I'm a PhD student in the social psychology program here at ASU, and I teach a class called Psychology of Thinking, which is basically a critical thinking class with an emphasis on psychology. Uh, my name is Kay Leith, and I am an undergraduate student studying uh, psychology and English literature through the Honors College and I teach a, I co-teach a Psych 101 course with uh, Mackenzie O'Neill. And I am Mackenzie O'Neill. Um, <laughs> As you just found out, I co-teach um, Intro to Psych with Kay. Um, I am a third year PhD student in the Social Psychology Department, like Stephanie. Just a lovely little down the line. <laughs> I am Edward Gerbis. I am a master's student in creative writing in uh, in fiction, and I, that's what I teach at I'm in prison, fiction, creative writing. Hi, my name is Greg Yankee. I am a third year PhD student in philosophy, and the course I teach at the I'm in state prison after the last three years is Introduction to Ethics. Hi, I'm Nala Brewer, and I'm a faculty member in the math department, and um, I've been teaching there since 2002, and I teach the GED class and the pre-calc class over in the Florence prison. Hi, I'm Grace. I'm a PhD. <laughs> I'm a PhD candidate in biology, and I um, help teach the prison biology program. Hi, I'm Sam Ruckman. I'm a faculty and I teach uh, at Globe, the Penn Project, and I have a creative writing degree. Well, thank you all for joining us today. I'm sure everyone here is interested to know what motivated you guys to start teaching in the prison. Well, I was wanting to teach a class anyway, and I heard from another graduate student who taught at the prison that it was a really great experience, and I heard that the students at the prison were really engaged and really involved and very motivated students, and it sounded really fun. And it also gave me a chance to teach a class that I always wanted to teach that I was able to create from the ground up. Uh, I originally got started teaching um, through the Penn Project my sophomore year of college. And that was because I had had Corey, um, Corey Wells, uh, as my uh, freshman English teacher, and she told me about the opportunity. And I actually completed an honors contract where I taught a creative writing workshop at Iman in the maximum security um, unit and it really opened my eyes to in-person teaching and I discovered that I really like teaching not just through um, through uh, the letters of correspondence and all that but through in-person teaching and that was how I uh, got started with the PEP pro uh, program. Um, I don't know if we're just going down the line but uh, <laughs> I, I think I can kind of echo what they just said. Um, I am very passionate about teaching. Just generally, it's really what I want to do for my career. Um, so for me, any opportunity to teach ever, I jump at. And a colleague of mine taught in Florence Prison last year, and she just raved about how wonderful it was and how engaged students were. Um, so as soon as I had the opportunity to do this, I knew I wanted to be a part of it. Yeah, I have a pretty similar answer. I, uh, I normally teach composition here, and they said I could teach creative writing, which is what I wanted to teach, so it just seemed like it. And uh, Dr. Corey Wells kind of 
gave me a good spiel, so I signed up for it. <laughs> uh, I guess the motivation for teaching for me uh, was first an opportunity to teach because there's not always opportunities for, for graduate students to teach classes at ASU. Uh, and the other thing was just the freedom to teach what I was excited about and also what the inmates were excited about. So uh, how I start a course is usually giving an overview of what philosophy and ethics are about and then asking what their interests are and then tailoring, or tailoring the course to whatever motivates them or what their interests are rather than feeling that you have to teach a curriculum that uh, fits some sort of a regime in terms of what the classes require. Um, for, for me, uh, I had done some volunteer work at Tent City years ago, um, so I knew it wasn't anything to be afraid of. Um, you know, when I first did that, I was kind of scared. Our department chair sent out an email that he needed some volunteers uh, for teaching, and I had actually been <laughs> praying for a volunteer opportunity that I would feel uh, would be meaningful and something that I could do. And I thought, well, I think this is the answer to my prayer. So anyway, I went went and um, heard about it, and then I went to the security training. And um, they are really engaged, really um, motivated, and it's it's been a really good experience. I'm really happy with it. Um, I actually started working with um, women inmates in my um, undergrad class in my undergrad and I really wanted to continue with uh, teaching in the prison at ASU when I was a grad student here at ASU and uh, when I heard about the prison biology program I just jumped on that opportunity and I also thought that it would be interesting to try and teach science in such a challenging environment limited environment and so far our students have been all very engaging and they are very eager to learn and it's really rewarding to see how they can apply just like basic biology concepts to their everyday lives. Well, I got interested in um, the Penn Project a few years ago when a friend of mine was uh, sentenced to 15 years in a state prison. <clears throat> and he has been shuffled around from private prison from state to state. And basically through letter writing, um, I got a pretty good feeling of what was going on in there and decided that I wanted to do something more than just write letters to my friend who's probably going to get out in another 12 years. OK, so going off of that, it appears as if a lot of you guys have had a previous teaching experience. For those of you guys who have um, taught outside of the prison setting, how has teaching in the prison setting differ from teaching outside? So this is actually my first class, so I haven't actually taught at the university yet. I'm an undergrad student. <laughs> um, can you guys hear me or? No. Okay. No. no. Cool. Sweet. Oh, no. This isn't on. Ha, huh, now it is. There we go. Okay. Maybe. <coughs> yes. Now, yes. Okay. Um, I, as I said, really love teaching. So I actually do have quite a bit of teaching experience in. It's off and off. No idea. Does that one work? Oh gosh, this is swell. Okay, um, so I think the biggest difference that I see between um, an ASU classroom and um, teaching in the prison is really the level of engagement that I see with the inmates is so much higher than your average ASU classroom. I think um, in, at a school like ASU, you get such a variety of students from the ones who are really excited to be there to the ones that, you know, they're just taking this class because they have to fulfill some requirement. Um, and in the situation that we're all in, this is more or less a volunteer opportunity for them. Um, they're excited to be there. They've specifically chosen this class. Um, and they know that you're there as a volunteer. So they are so excited to learn from you, which I think makes the discussion so lively that you might have your curriculum set for the day and then it totally gets derailed, derailed in a really interesting way because they have such interesting questions. That's, that's what I've seen anyway. Yeah, I agree with that um, 100% because I don't know. I'm going to get in trouble, I think, but I think my... Uh, my prison students are way better than my ASU students. Um, 
It's like the only time like my students at ASU will ever talk to me is like, hey, I missed my homework, what can you do for me? You know, and uh, in the prison they like, they want me to stay there after class to talk about what we talked in class, which is what I want to be talking about, you know, and um, yeah, otherwise, yeah, 100% what she just said, so. One of the key differences I notice in, say, an ASU classroom compared to in the prison is access to technology, obviously, and, and that's a positive thing and a negative thing, but overall I would say it is a positive. For me, I'm used to, when I'm in front of an ASU class, I'm using PowerPoint and maybe my teaching gets a little lazy. Uh, in the prison, I've got a small whiteboard and a marker and I have to um, sort of engage the students, guide them, facilitate them with a, a minimum of resources and minimum of, say, uh, paper in terms of books and other materials. Uh, but that makes me a better teacher and, and certainly it, it, uh, you feel more appreciated as well when in an ASU classroom there's people with their laptops and cell phones texting, they're on Facebook, that opportunity doesn't arise in the prison for the inmates, which is nice. Uh, so uh, as the others have said, the students are more engaged and I think I become more engaged as well. There were mainly uh, two differences that I've noticed before. Um, what everyone else said that they're they're very very eager to learn they chose to be in that class they're also really respectful and appreciative pretty much at the end of every class they say thank you so much for teaching this class I really appreciate you coming by um, the other thing is the technology there are no cell phones allowed they have no internet access so things that I normally do automatically in class um, I, I realize when it's too late that I can't do it so one time I had I was one copy short you know on the the homework assignment and I said I'm so sorry to the student who didn't get his copy and I said um, I'll bring one next week I said why don't you just um, copy down what your friend had and I forgot how long it takes to copy everything down whereas in class they just take pictures of my notes they take pictures of their homework they they share things that way so uh, technology wise um, there, there's a, a big difference but in a way it's, it's a good thing because they're actually using their brain more, especially in a math class, um, you know, and, and they appreciate any, any little extras that, that, you know, that you can bring in there and teach them. So our students also are really engaged and they are appreciative to, um, more appreciative than any undergrad student I ever have taught. Um, but I agree with um, your concern about the limited amount of technology that, um, or the limited amount of resources that they have access to. So we teach biology at a undergraduate level and for under normal circumstances, we would expect our students to come in with some sort of just like very basic chemistry or just uh, like middle school or high school biology background. And then we build upon those, that pre-existing knowledge with our content. But we've learned that we can't rely on those assumptions. We have to teach biology that you would normally be introduced to in middle school and then build on those concepts into something much more complex like immunization and um, uh, neurobiology, neuroscience. So um, given those limitations and given that we have to take into account our students' limited science backgrounds, it's made us a better teachers. We're much more comprehensive with our lessons and we have our students to thank for that. Yeah, I think it's, <clears throat> I mean, I guess it's sort of tempting because what we do is compare things, right? So I've been teaching a long time, undergrads, and, um, you know, my first thought was, yeah, the, per the inmates are better students than my 102 students, but they're not. They're just different types of students, and it's kind of like my very first grad school class that I taught where there was no internet and they thought I had something to say because guess what, it was either me or you're gonna go dig through the card catalog in the library. They're into it. You know, they're really turned on, they're really checked in. You're it, you're their internet, you're their library, you're a face that cares and you see them as people. And so that's very different. 
<laughs> well, um, now some of you guys have touched on this, but what would you say have been the main challenges of teaching in a prison environment? I think the hardest part is all the limitations on what you can bring with you into the classroom. So I've had one reading that I wanted to bring in that was rejected and I've had at least three different items that I wanted to bring in with me rejected. Um, and when that happens, you have to get creative and think, is there an alternative way I can teach this given the limitations? When I want to show the students something in color, it's a bit of a challenge because we don't have PowerPoint. So I've actually gone to FedEx and had a lot of things printed out in color there and laminated and brought them in because I can't just throw it on my PowerPoint. Another challenge is that our students have a huge variety of educational backgrounds. We have students with bachelor's degrees, sometimes students with advanced degrees, students who never even went to high school. And so you're teaching all of these students in the same class and that's obviously challenging when you're trying to decide what vocabulary words to define as you do. You have to ask yourself, is this word going to be so easy it's going to insult some of them? But on the other hand, some of these guys never actually finished high school. And another challenge is that our students sometimes just disappear and you never hear from them again. There's no contact with these students outside of the class. There are no office hours and there's no email and sometimes they just disappear and that's really, really sad because they're just gone. I'm gonna give this another shot. Nope, maybe. Okay. Um, all time. Um, <laughs> give it up. <laughs> okay, so for me, the main challenge that I have is the personal distance rules. We're not allowed to know these guys' names. We're not, well, their first names. We're supposed to maintain, uh, I'm always referred to as Miss Leaf. She's always referred to as Miss O'Neill. We never give any of our personal information regarding anything about ourselves beyond the fact that we are ASU students who are studying one particular branch. And it's really difficult because these are human beings and these are guys who are just so hungry for knowledge and you want to treat them like a normal person, but you can't because the situation demands you to operate in a way that I'm just not used to. So that's something that's been a real struggle in terms of um, teaching, learning how to give the best education that I can to these guys while still keeping in mind that I have to abide by these rules that have been set up for not only my protection, but for their protection as well. Um, I, I don't really think I have anything to add other than what everybody said about technology and then just what Kay and Stephanie are covered. So. Yeah, I mean, that's it's technology and like from creative writing perspective, one thing we have to do is we have to type, they, they hand write their stories because they don't have computers, we have to type up everything they write and then redistribute it, which I would never do for uh, ASU. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's that's really it. Otherwise, it's not any much, very much more difficult than teaching here. I don't have much more to add. The only thing, from a personal standpoint, I find really difficult is after a lot of classes, people who've appreciated the discussion will come up and put their hand out and want to shake my hand. And because there's a policy that we can't uh, touch inmates, I have to apologize and say, sorry, I can't shake your hand. I find that very difficult, but I understand the policy reasons behind it, uh, but it still feels like it, you're not having that connection to people who are appreciative like you could. Um, uh, one of the reasons why I became a mathematician is I'm, I'm kind of stubborn and I'm a problem solver, so it's actually been kind of enjoyable for me. <laughs> so like, uh, we were I was trying to figure out, you know, how can I uh, teach this class? You know, it was getting hard to do all the copies and everything. And um, and I th and I think either Mr. Price brought it up or, or we were thinking about what about uh, books? You know, and I thought, I wonder if we have any extra books lying around. And it turned out we have a whole like closet 
full of books that my department chair is just dying to get rid of. So when I asked him if we could donate some of those books, by all means. <laughs> and it was amazing how fast it got passed. It got passed in like 24 hours. So for me, it's been, it's, I'm kind of, um, it's kind of strange, but I like problems. I like to solve problems. So for me, it's been kind of enjoyable to figure out how to solve some of these problems. <laughs> So we've had the technology limitations that everyone else has mentioned, um, except for we have PowerPoint. And um, <laughs> as a biology class, we also have the uh, unique situation of where we would like to help our students conduct experiments, but they can't because we can't bring in those resources. Uh, in the past, we've tried to do sort of a like ex remote experiment situation while they come up with the methods and we carry out the actual methods and then we take pictures and they can analyze those pictures. Uh, it requires a lot of work on our part as well. And of course, we're all volunteers who are trying to write their dissertations. So that's been challenging. Um, this year, we had a uh, undergrad student come up with this wonderful, like, like um, just this project idea, and she's carried it out really well, and our students were able to give presentations. So every year is just a new um, challenge of finding ways of having our students sort of like synthesize what they learn into a project or some sort of experiment. Yeah, I don't think there have been any limitations at all for me. I teach creative writing, and I think it goes great. Well, along with the major challenges, I'm sure there are major rewards that you guys have experienced, as have I. So what are some of the most rewarding moments from teaching in the prisons? Well, I love it. I feel like every class is incredibly rewarding. This is definitely what I want to do with my life. Like what Mackenzie said, this is really fun. Whenever the students just show that they're very interested in what we're talking about, that's very rewarding. So they ask a lot of questions, they have a lot of comments, they get into a lot of debates with each other in the middle of class and they get really into it. They come up to us after class and they want to keep talking to us. They'll ask us for extra reading. Can you please get these papers for me or can we talk more about memory and things like that. Just to see that they're very interested in it is very rewarding. And one thing in particular that stands out in my memory is at the end of the first semester, our students gave me and Kim Chi a card that they had made. They had made it out of a manila, manila folder. Like they cut it into card shape and they got someone who was a fantastic artist in the prison to make this really cool piece of artwork. It had the ASU fork on it and this really cool design with a pencil and a ruler and a graduation cap and this ribbon and it said thanks Ms. Pham, Ms. Northover. Really, really, really great art. And then on the inside they wrote all these really sweet comments to us just saying thank you and it's been really great. And that was really, really rewarding. Um, in terms of like the greatest reward that I've seen is just Seeing them connect the lecture with their own life experiences, because that's the nature of psychology. It's something that everyone's, everyone's got a brain between their ears. And seeing them take the, the language and the terminology that we give them in lecture and then understand it in their own ways, that's really rewarding because it can be difficult translating some of the more nuanced parts of psychology into something that they can understand and that they can tangibly work with. And just seeing them do that is incredibly gratifying to me. Um, I think it's actually really hard for me to pinpoint like one or two rewarding moments because sort of like Stephanie said, every yeah. single week when I walk out of the prison, I just feel rewarded. So just the experience in and of itself is a rewarding experience. Um, I think every time that you're teaching and you see, we teach psychology, so it's human behavior and it's a thing that all humans can relate to. And when you see a couple students, all of a sudden their faces are just like, what? And like, they are just surprised and then they can like connect it to their, and you can literally see it on their faces. That is like the coolest thing in the world for me. Um, but beyond that, it's really hard for me to just identify one thing that I think is very rewarding. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of everything they've said, like every class people say thank you, which is nice. Um, and uh, yeah, the other thing I think is like, they take everything I teach sincerely. Like even if they don't like a short story we're talking about, they'll take it as a real learning opportunity and we'll discuss it with like, with passion, which is really, really rewarding in itself. So I think those are the things. Um. For me, I think one of the most rewarding things is not only the people who are really engaged with the material, but some of the ones who don't seem like they're engaged and then you realize that they are. Some of the quietest people in the classes will come up to me after the class is all over and they haven't said much during the whole class, but at the end they'll say, thank you so much, I've learned so much. So you realize that you're getting through to people who may not be engaged verbally with the material, but they're still thinking about it, it's impacting them. And, and I also give optional homework assignments each week and say you can write from as little as a few sentences to a paragraph to as much as you want. And I've had the odd student who will write, say, 20 handwritten pages of what their thoughts are. And that's rewarding to get that and it's rewarding to read it. Um. There, there are two incidents that I can think of. Last semester, there was a, a student who came up to me after class and said, you know, when I get out, I'm going to go to school to be an engineer. And I said, good for you. And he started asking me about tuition and how am I going to afford it. And I said, if you want to go to school, I said, there are grants and loans out there. You can go to school. And then uh, this semester uh, at the GED class, one of the uh, inmates said, you know, uh, the reason why I'm taking this class is I want to be able to help my son when he has problems with his homework. And I said, good for you. <laughs> so it was really um, I think the most rewarding um, aspects is when our students are suddenly able to apply what they learn in our class. So we've had students tell us that they suddenly are able to understand uh, science news because they understand the vocabulary now. We had one student tell us that he's able to help with his daughter's science homework, which was great. Uh, recently, we had one student tell us that he was suddenly able to, I don't, he was reading something that had to do with diabetes and we were talking about the um, hormones that are involved in metabolism and suddenly he was able to understand whatever he was reading a lot better. So those are all very rewarding. Um, I like so much about it, but I really like it when um, you're teaching something and you see the guys connect with one another and help one another and you see just the connection that they've formed with each other and I don't know. It's just oh, the whole thing is great, but that sticks out in my mind is guys helping each other read and everybody sharing their work and um, not judging. Well, it definitely is um, a very rewarding experience. Um, so what would you guys say or how has teaching in a prison changed your perspective? All right. That's a bit of a tough question, but... Before I started teaching in a prison, I didn't give prisons a lot of thought. And now I think about the prison system in this country, and now I think it's a bit of a social problem, and now it's, a, it's an issue that I care about. And I didn't really have an accurate idea about what prisoners were like. I think. In our society, we often think of prisoners as being the lower sort of people in society that we just want to sort of hide away, but actually interacting with these guys, I realized they're very intelligent and they're very curious and they're they have so much potential and that's something that I learned from working with them and it's totally changed my perspective on these guys and I think I see them as much more valuable and much more human than I did before starting this gig. Yeah, um, pretty much everything that Stephanie just said. Uh, it's mainly just increased my awareness of how little attention goes into prisoners once they've been convicted and sent away and how little attention there is on education, uh, prison education as a whole. So that's mainly how it's affected my perspective. 
Um, I would echo the same things that they just said. Um, I don't know where you guys are, but when the Atlas folks talked, um, I really identified when you guys said that just getting the community involved to disband a lot of those stereotypes, because I had not had a lot of interaction with people who have been incarcerated or with prisoners in general, and just seeing that how many of those stereotypes really don't hold when you actually get to know these individuals. Um, and so I really appreciate what you guys were saying about getting the community involved once they've been released. Yeah, I agree with all that uh, as well. Um, from, from my field, like the one thing that I think I've learned a lot is I always thought having a better education made, was what made you a better writer. Um, and I always thought like, if you've read Dostoevsky, you're gonna be better, but I've run into so many guys now who, haven't read a single book, haven't written a single essay, and are telling the best stories. And yeah, I don't know what to do with that information yet, but it's something that's like definitely in my mind now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think the way my perspective has changed is just from my knowledge and attitude towards inmates. Probably like a lot of people, any knowledge I had probably came from the media and there's not much treatment of prisons and inmates in the news media, so I would say most of it probably came from fiction, from television crime dramas. So I remember the first time going to a class being quite surprised that I didn't have my own armed guard <laughs> pretty much uh, accompanying me throughout. And you realize that we were taught that inmates are inherently dangerous, that the situation's dangerous, that there's uh, Lord of the Flies type chaos in prison environments where riots may break out at any given moment but the reality is that in the classroom it's not that much different from a classroom at ASU and other than we, you have inmates that bring a level of wisdom to the table that you typically don't get if you're teaching 18 through 22 year olds at, at a university. I, I think the way that, that my perspective has changed is um, uh, through the education liaisons, um, hearing some of the stories behind some of the inmates that a lot of them, it was just drugs and alcohol involved in a one night mistake, you know, and, and, and I realized that there, but for the grace of God, could any of us go, you know, so it made me realize that they are people too. And, um, you know, that I want to do whatever I can to, 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 to make the transition easier when they get out and give them that hope. So I was um, actually pretty nervous at first teaching male inmates because I only had experience with women inmates before and most of them have been incarcerated because they were in a bad situation or in a domestic violence situation. So I just, I didn't know what to expect with men, male inmates, but they really are, um, I've come to realize they're in a uh, social structure where um, they have this like demand of like this toxic masculinity always on them and they it's very detrimental to their um, psychological health and in our uh, class I, I mean we've had students before that saying like inner class is really when they can kind of like relax a bit and um, I don't know I just I've grown more comfortable I don't know if that's really a perspective change but I've grown more comfortable and we have students they are uh, very uh, philosophical they I have obviously think a, a lot more deeply about certain things than I have and it's always very um, interesting to get their perspective on things yeah I would agree with both of those things um, <clears throat> before I went to the prison the first time and I didn't tell Corey this because I knew I was gonna talk myself into it no matter what um, I have a had a had had a childhood phobia of prisons and thought I was gonna have a nervous breakdown going inside of one. And thought, oh, I'm gonna have to get Valium or I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to figure this out. If, that ga if the gate clangs behind me, that'll be it. I'll just dissolve into a puddle. And really, it felt like a sort of a dingy airport waiting room. And um, walking through the yard was briefly scary because there were a lot of men and there was a lot of orange and um, I was confronting something that really frightened me, really the facility itself more than the people. And when I got in the classroom, I realized exactly what you said is that 
these guys are really open and vulnerable. And it really kind of felt like these were guys that could have been my ASU students who made a bad decision. Or like my buddy who made a really bad decision. So that would be my change. And now I'm not terrified of going in there. So. Wow, thank you for sharing that. Um, what would you guys say is the value of prison education, specifically higher education? Another deep question. <laughs> well, I've always valued knowledge for the sake of knowledge, but from a more practical standpoint, this uh, just giving the prisoners a general education, I think, is going to give them more options if they're released. If they feel like they have more options other than crime, then of course they're going to have a better life. It's going to be better for society. It's going to lower recidivism rates. But uh, I guess in a more meaningful way, the way I think about the value of education in prison is that for those of us who've been to college, we've probably all experienced classes that were very inspirational. The sort of classes that made you just feel like, wow, this is great and this has really changed my perspective on things. But I suspect that a lot of the students in the prison have missed out on that experience, especially those who never went to college. Because I don't know about your high school, but my high school experience was not inspirational. So if I never went to college, never would have experienced that. So I'm hoping that we can sort of share that feeling with the students in prison, that they can sort of feel that inspiration, that excitement, and that just that joy about learning things. And I hope that it encourages them to pursue more learning in the future. Uh, so my work at the prison is tied into the thesis that I'm doing through the Honors College and it focuses specifically on the importance of university level education at, um, for uh, inmates. And the main reason why I feel it's important to have this higher level education is because it exposes the guys to opportunities that they might otherwise never have had. And like the big push, like the big thing that I believe is that by having these voluntary classes that they're not getting grades for, they're not getting any credit for, even though it's not benefiting them in like a credit way, it's still illustrating that they are capable of doing this college level work and they have the ability to go forward and to pursue these educational paths that might not have been able, uh, they might not have been able to reach on their own. I think that really this is actually a much more systemic question than we have time to get into today. Um, but I am a big believer that I think higher education in general should be available to all people. And as it currently stands in this country, it's very much a middle and upper class opportunity. Um, so what I think the value of higher education is in the prison, I, for me, I think that Everyone should have that opportunity, regardless of their socioeconomic background, regardless of their wealth, and regardless of if they've been incarcerated. So I, I just think it's valuable because it's valuable to everybody. Yeah, I can't really speak to all of higher education, but like writing, I think, is like it's something that you do in your free time. It's not something that we can really do in a classroom. And I, I don't know, I think I'm giving them the potential to fill their free time with something productive and meaningful and like a way to express themselves, as corny as that may sound. Um, yeah, I think that's why I think it's an important class. Um, yeah. uh, I would say that education is a human right and typically the way we interpret that is in the form of basic education or education in, in our country through the 12th grade, but I think there is a human right to education that goes beyond that and now at least we're living in an environment where people who have access to the internet can continue with their education but I also think it's important that if we are really committed to this idea of rehabilitation being part of what the prison system is about that educational opportunities have to be there for inmates as well and we do have limited resources but in in a wealthy country like the united states it seems that that should be something that we put a priority on um, um for me i think it's, it's three things um i think they 
I think it's a basic human need to want intellectual stimulation and, and it, it, they really enjoy this class because they really don't get any other intellectual stimulation you know, out there. And then also I think it gives them a sense of pride. They really seem proud. They're taking a pre-calculus class and they've got these big calculus books that they checked out and calculators to go with it. And then the other thing is it gives them hope for when they get out. And, um, and I think there's some research to back that up that the recidivism rate is much lower once they've been taking education classes. Um, I agree with what's been previously said about education being a basic human right and that um, being able to access education helps boost self-confidence. With our class, what we also try to do is help build uh, critical thinking skills and evidence-based decision-making with the scientific method. So we uh, really try to help our students develop that ability. Well, I always think creative writing, I mean, it's cathartic, but also you write to figure out who you are and what you know. And what better place to do that than when you're sitting inside listening to yourself? Okay, so one last question before we take questions from the audience. From your experience, what is the attitudes of inmates towards educational programs in the prison? All I can really say is it seems like they really like it and appreciate it. It's been nothing but positive reactions. They're just always so grateful and so happy to have the opportunity. I agree with them. I mean, what I will say is we are kind of in a lucky situation where everyone in our classrooms, again, they have chosen to take those classes. Um, and they are, I mean, it's a privilege for them. Not all of the inmates get that opportunity. So I think we do kind of have the cream of the crop a little bit, and they are great. They love to be there, and they're really excited. I, I don't know what the kind of general attitudes of inmates are toward the education system, but I would imagine it would still be a relatively positive one. But I do think that I at least have a bit of a biased sense since my students are particularly excited about psychology and being in my classroom. Yeah, that's all true. Um, all I know is there's like a huge wait list to get into these classes and they're always asking for more classes. So I take it to mean that's very positive. But, uh. Yeah, what I've heard mostly from inmates is that their opportunities for education are somewhat limited. Uh, so the more uh, chances we have to provide them with these volunteer classes, uh, it seems that that's appreciated and that's to their benefit. Um, basically, they, they, they make me feel like it's the highlight of their week. They really do. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, um, our reactions have been very positive, and they want more classes. Yeah, I'll never forget the second time I went, and the guard said to me, the guys have been waiting for an hour, like <laughs> circulating around in the yard. And I think, good Lord, I feel like the queen or something. I mean, <laughs> really, they just can't get enough. And um, it's a really positive experience. Um, so unfortunately, we do not have time to take questions from the audience, but I would like to thank you all for being here. We're about to break. So if you guys have any questions that you would like to ask our panel members, I'm sure they'd be happy to answer those questions. So if you all would join me in a hand of applause for our panel members. Thank you for coming. <laughs>